Okay, we're going to talk about a problem, uh, give you a chance to put your ideas to, you know, what, what you're learning uh, to use, some of the ideas and the approach to calculation. And uh, we have a simple, kind of a simple problem here. It's a little bit different, though. Notice that the source is at the surface, the sink is at the surface, but the potential electrodes are buried beneath the surface 12 meters. <clears throat> so you're supposed to find the potential difference between these two points, P1 and P2. And as always, you know, that turns out to be a problem of finding out what the distances are between the um, source to the potential electrode, the potential electrode to the sink, and do that for each of the potential electrodes. So, again, you're starting with a basic definition. So, we're measuring a potential difference here, you know, V1, P1, V2, P2, as we did initially. And we usually just refer to this as V, but we'll call it V12 in this case. And so, again, it just, <clears throat> you know, the resistivity is given. The factor 2 pi stays in there. We know what the dimensions are, how deep, it is to the location of the potential electrodes. We know what the distance is between the source and the sink. So we have all the information that we need. Uh, what is D1? That would be a, a good starting point, but you know, term by term, what is D1? Well, D1 is just going to be this distance. So we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem, and you have the lengths of the two sides of the triangle, so it's going to be a simple matter to calculate the um, length of this side, just using the Pythagorean theorem. So we're not actually going to work through the example for you. We'll leave that uh, to you, but uh, just want to outline the approach. I think it's fairly straightforward. <clears throat> if you want to send me your answer, I'll let you know if you if you got it right. I also want to kind of introduce some additional uh, ideas, and uh, we're going to be talking about current refraction across an interface briefly. But generally, there, there are a few relationships to keep in mind. You know, again, the lines of current flow are uniformly distributed across a hemispherical surface. Uh, current flow will gradually be deflected away from a boundary if the material on the far side has a higher resistivity and conversely. And upon crossing a boundary, a line of current flow will be bent in accordance with this relationship here. So <clears throat> we know, you know, just rearranging this, we have row two over row one. Uh, tangent of theta increases with theta. So it doesn't increase linearly, but it, you know, it, it, if you have an increase in an angle, then you're going to have an increase in the tangent of theta. So we have this relationship rho 2 over rho 1 is equal to um, uh, tan theta 1 over tan theta 2. And so this is a, kind of an equivalence that we would need to maintain, and, and since increases in theta correspond to increases in tangent of theta, uh, if rho 2 over rho 1 is greater than 1, then tangent of theta 1 over tangent of theta 2 must also be greater than 1, which means that theta 1 must have increased. So we know that theta 1 in this case, is going to be greater than theta 2 when the resistivity in the underlying layer is greater. And theta 2 will be smaller than theta 1. <clears throat> okay. If rho 2 is greater than rho 1, theta 1 will be greater than theta 2. So you can almost think of it as kind of an inverse relationship. Increase rho 2, decrease theta 2. So here's a problem. Um, 
theta is measured relative to the surface normal when we're talking about theta. That's the angle that we're talking about. So theta 1 in this case, the angle that the current flow line makes with the normal is our theta 1. Notice that rho 2 is the higher resistivity interval. Rho 1 is the lower resistivity interval. So since rho 2 is greater than one, rho 1, we know that theta 1 must be greater than theta 2. So if you had a problem like this, I'd suggest that you actually measure these angles and calculate the thetas uh, using this uh, uh, relationship that we, we rho 1 tan theta 1 is equal to rho 2 tan theta 2. <clears throat> So we know that this theta 2 is going to be smaller. Rho 2 is greater. Theta 2 is smaller. Over here, rho 1 is greater. Theta 2, rho 2 is smaller. So theta 2 is going to be larger, right? So um, let's take a look, look at some other examples. Um, here we have theta 1 greater than theta 2. What would you guess the relationship is between row 2 and row 1? You could come back to this general relationship here. But basically, decreases in theta 2 correspond to increases in row 2. So how about down here we have theta 2 is larger. So what do you expect uh, this relationship will be? We'll have rho 2 less than rho 1 in that, in that case. <clears throat> so fairly straightforward. In this case, just, you know, you can almost forget about the relationship down here. And just look what the um, current flow lines are doing. Current wants to stay up here in this first layer. So, you know, if you think back to current following the path of least resistance, we kind of guess that row 1 is going to be, is going to be less than row 2. Uh, uh, theta 1 is greater than theta 2, so we know that row 2 is going to be greater than row 1, just looking at the angles. But we can also look at these uh, current flow lines and just see that current prefer, you know, wants to stay up in this layer. Uh, in this example here, we don't have any current getting down into the second layer. So we know that row 2 must be significantly greater than row 1. Current just is just not making it down into that layer. Uh, the resistivity method is, this could be a stopping point for resistivity. Terrain conductivity, we could continue to propagate electromagnetic waves through this layer, but if we were interested in anything below this layer, we aren't getting any current down there. We aren't going to see it. So high resistivity layers, you know, as we mentioned before, can be a kind of prohibit the use, the effective use of, of a resistivity uh, technique. Here's another example. Notice what the uh, current flow lines are doing. They're trying to get down into this deeper layer. Again, just thinking in terms of the path of least resistance. Uh, I mean, we could, we could draw our angles in here. This angle is greater, so rho 2 must be less than rho 1. But we also see that current, the flow lines, current wants to come down here and flow through this, this layer. This is the easiest way to get from the source to the sink. Over here again, Kind of obvious. Uh, we don't have any angles that we can work with, but the current flow lines just aren't making it into the second layer. Row 2 is obviously a lot greater than row 1. <clears throat> Next time we're going to take a look at, a, at this problem or problems similar to this type of a problem. Uh, you know, what happens when we have current flow across an interface between two media that have different resistivities. And we're going to develop some basic relationships. So you might uh, look through your textbook and, you know, just get a feeling for how this uh, 
how these ideas are developed, and we'll come back and talk about those next time. Thanks for joining us.